Now all of this motion got Newton thinking. What force could be acting on the Earth, the Moon, and the planets to keep them moving in orbit around the Sun? It turns out that that force is gravity. Now that we've finished covering Newton's laws of motion, let's venture onwards to see what his law of universal gravitation is all about. It states that any two masses will exert an attractive gravitational force on one another. These forces are directed along the imaginary line that connects their centers. The interesting thing here is that the forces that these two objects experience from one another are the same, despite the object's own mass differences, and here's why. Newton correctly determined that both masses are equally involved in the gravitational attraction experienced between them. One does not overpower the other. He also determined that this gravitational attraction between the two objects follows what we call an inverse square law. This can be seen more clearly if we take a look at Newton's law of universal gravitation in equation form, which states that F equals gmm over r squared. In this equation, F is the force of gravity between the two objects, one of mass capital M and the other of mass lowercase m, though sometimes you may see these as m1 and m2. The distance between the two objects is given by r, but when we're dealing with an inverse square law, this distance r is squared and in the denominator of the expression, hence the square and the inverse in the inverse square law. The capital G is the universal gravitational constant, which has a value of 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 newtons times meters squared per kilogram squared. This value will be useful later, so it's good to remember it. To get a sense of how the inverse square law works, imagine you were standing right next to a bonfire about one foot away. You would definitely feel the heat and see the brightness of the light from the fire, but if you were to step away from the bonfire and now you're standing at a distance of two feet, the brightness will have decreased by a factor of four. And if you move even further away from the bonfire and now stand at a distance of three feet, the brightness will have decreased by a factor of nine. Four feet, brightness decreases by a factor of 16. The further away you get, the brightness will drop by a square of your distance until you no longer feel the heat at all. The same thing can be said about the force of gravity between two objects. Not only are their individual masses important in determining the magnitude of the gravitational force they exert on each other, so is the distance between them. Let's see how various things can affect the gravitational force between two objects. Take, for example, the Earth and the Moon. The Moon pulls on the Earth just as much as the Earth itself pulls on the Moon. If the mass of one of the two objects were to increase, so would the gravitational force between the two. Even if the other mass were to increase, you would still see an increase in the gravitational force shared between these two objects. If either of the two masses were to decrease instead, we would see a decrease in the gravitational force, but it's still a noticeable change nonetheless. However, the distance is what really makes the biggest difference in how the gravitational force is affected. In the original configuration, the Earth and the Moon were held one Earth-Moon distance apart. And these two objects experienced the initial force of gravity that we've given a magnitude of F1, since we are at our original distance, R1. If we move the moon to twice this distance, R2, the gravitational force between the two objects drops by a factor of 4, so it's safe to say that a small change in the distance means a large change in the force. In the next video, we'll go ahead and work through some detailed examples of using Newton's law of universal gravitation.